very much indeed. So here in England, around 8,000 young people are coerced into marriage each year. More than 80% of victims are female. 15% were under the age of 15. Well, from today, parents who forced their children into marriage could face up to seven years in jail. And this new law will also help British nationals who are taken abroad to be married against their will. So will the law help or hinder victims of forced marriage? With me on my left is Commander Mac Chishti from the uh, Metropolitan Police Force in London. Polly Harrar is director of the Sharan Project, a charity which helps vulnerable women of South Asian origin who are affected by forced marriage. And uh, immediately alongside me, Jasvinda Sangera, uh, director of the Karma Nirvana charity, who was herself almost a victim of forced marriage. Thank you all for joining us on Global Today. Just, Jasvinda, if we can just start with, with your experience. You, sure. you managed to escape, but, but only just, didn't mm. you? Yeah, I, I was born in Britain. I went to a British school. I watched the majority of my sisters being taken out of education when they were 15 to marry many photographs. I was 14 years old when my mother sat me down and presented me with a photograph of the man I was to learn I was promised to from the age of eight. And saying no was not an option. I was taken out of education, held a prisoner in my own home until I agreed to the marriage. You know, my mother would make it clear to me this is our religion, our tradition, our culture, that's why you have to go through with it. In the end, I escaped and I ran away from home at the age of 16. Uh, and, and what happened then? Were you pursued by your family? My family reported me missing to the police. Then, you know, the police can be used to track people down. Um, my mother um, said, the, the police told me to ring home to call my mother, sorry, and my mother gave me two choices. I either come back and marry who they say, if not, from this day forward, I am now dead in their eyes. Polly, um, the, the criminalisation of this, I mean, will that, will that work, do you think, or do you think it could be counterproductive? Some girls won't want to come forward and, and actually have to convict their, their parents. Um, I think as a standalone piece, having the legislation is a good thing. I think what it does also, as well as showing to the world and to the UK, is that forced marriages are unacceptable. As for the young girls and boys themselves, they can also use that as a tool to negotiate in these situations with their parents to say, you can't do this, it's illegal, and there will be consequences. It's not just about criminalising parents, it's about changing perceptions and ideas. OK, well, we'll come to that in a minute. But, Mac, Mac just, I mean, I, the, the, there's a there's a precedent here, isn't there? There's something similar operating in Scotland at the moment, and there haven't been any convictions at all, I think, mm. over the past three years. The implementation of this is going to be very difficult, isn't it? Well, what we do need is we need people to come forward. There's, there is a vast amount of underreporting. The estimates are between five and 8,000 girls who are forced into marriage each year, and we only get a certain percentage, a small percentage. So, first and foremost, for any law to be effective, we need people to come forward, tell people like me, people like charities, uh, community workers, so we can get in and help them first and foremost. But but that process needs to, and that support is going to need to be there right from the word go, isn't it? Because if you make, say, a, an arrest, if somebody is charged and you've got a year to wait before that court process starts, mm -hmm. the family could persuade, potentially, the, 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 the plaintiff to actually change her mind. Absolutely, and we're, we're quite well versed. We've picked up a lot of experience over recent years to do with child abuse, child sexual exploitation, uh, abuse in, in the home where we know people are vulnerable, we know that they're going to be targeted with all sorts of pressures and we put a range of packages around that. We've got the new Victims Code which help us through the court process as well and additionally with, with our work with, this, with the Crown Prosecution Service we work jointly on many issues. Okay, but well, let, let's look at, say, Pakistan, just, just, just Finda, you know, where, where so many of these cases uh, have come from. Culturally, how are you going to change families over there? How are you going to change communities there who, who probably don't even understand the concepts of what we would say in this country and in Europe as being a forced marriage. I think the, the starting point is we've got to make that change here. What we know is families will take um, these children out, predominantly to Pakistan and India, and force them into marriages abroad, and those people are connected in terms of perpetrators. You know, the law gives us extra jurisdiction as well to consider these things. The important thing is here, I was born in Britain. I want to be afforded the same level of protection as my white counterparts. Today, I can finally own this as a crime. The police are key to that because the police need the clarity also that this isn't part of one's tradition. This firmly places it within the law. Now, that will send out a very strong message in terms of acting as a deterrent. 
to the perpetrators, but also to the professionals who somehow think this is different. So the change has to come from within, and I think... But, but how are you going to do that when you've got, you know, a police force which is stretched on so many levels, not only in this country, but, but certainly in, in Pakistan? How is that message, how is that education going to be spread in... in Regardless of a police force being stretched, the police have a fundamental role to protect individuals and to respond to crime. So police forces now will be creating more awareness. We've got a HMIC inspection in this area now. But, 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 but there are people still being stoned by their families in parts of uh, Pakistan, yeah. you know, with a police force which, force which is impotent. Well, Something like this for an arranged marriage, I mean, where's that going to feature British, on their list of priorities? Our British embassies in Islamabad, in India, etc., have very close links with the police out there. We managed to repatriate with those links with police forces. So those relationships will only be strengthened through this law. Are you as optimistic, Polly? I am, but I'm also quite cautious. Um, just this, this morning I was speaking to a 19-year-old who is going through a forced marriage and she told her parents, it's now illegal, you can't do this. And they t replied to her and said, well, as long as you're under my roof, you do as I t say. So we understand there are going to be some challenges well, that's that all and parents, cultural yeah. complexities. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. But more so in the situation of safeguarding this individual, Applying the law in itself is not enough, but understanding the cultural barriers and challenges and providing that holistic support is going to make the difference. Tell, tell us something about the fear that permeates these, the, these girls you come into contact with as well, when they have gone against their, their, their family's wishes. Well, if you can imagine being pulled away from everything you've ever known, being disowned by your families, as Jasmine was saying, is extremely difficult. It's stepping into the unknown, it's taking a risk and not knowing who you can trust and where to go for support. Your whole world is changed upside down. Knowing that there is support available for you when you're in that situation, that you're not alone, is really critical in ensuring that abusive behaviours are not allowed to continue, that you recognise that it's wrong and there is support if, when you step away from that. I think that's really critical. Uh, and is this something, do you think, which needs a sort of an, an international campaign, Jess Finder, you know, with, with people a bit like you, sure. to actually say, in Pakistan, mm. in other Asian countries, yeah. you know, this is unacceptable. Mm. And is that happening? No, without a doubt, we do need that global campaign. The Prime Minister is hosting a summit on forced marriage and FGM on July the 22nd here in this country. Our international partners will be there. You know, we will be talking about this issue globally and thinking about how we as countries can come together to tackle this collectively, because you're absolutely right. We know there's a real link with abduction, kidnap of people being taken abroad. The only way we can effectively achieve prosecutions and bring those people back is with the support of the authorities. OK, we're running out of time. I just want to pick up that point that Jasmine made a couple of moments ago, um, Commander Chishti. Um, is there cooperation with the Pakistani authorities about something like this? Or are you tearing your hair out uh, if you're going to be sort of going over there trying to track people down? There's really good cooperation with our international community, in particular, you mentioned Pakistan. We've got a number of cases in which we've worked together where we've rescued girls, and I'm really pleased about that. But the other point that you're talking about, I think we shouldn't underestimate the the influence of the diaspora here who send a lot of money to the development of Pakistan and how influential they can be. I'd like to just point out a girl forced into marriage is forced into condemned into servitude, marital rape, uh, forced pregnancy with no way out for the rest of her natural life. This is not Islam, this is not tradition, this is harming an individual and to that extent I think communities right across the world will stand shoulder to shoulder. Okay. Uh, we must leave it there, I'm afraid. Uh, Commander Matt Chishti, uh, Jess Vinder Sangara and uh, Polly Hara, thank you very much thank indeed uh, for joining us on Global.